Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Today's podcast is brought to you by Thinkific. Thinkific is the number one platform to create, market, and sell your own online courses or membership sites. They have revolutionized how individuals earn and learn online by building an all-in-one platform designed for both course creators and their audience. Try Thinkific for free today at try.thinkific.com slash Jen Glanz. That's try.thinkific.com slash Jen Glanz. You are going to love it. Today's podcast is sponsored by Clay, a beautiful and private digital Rolodex intentionally designed to help you be more thoughtful with the people who matter to you. I'm always looking for ways to strengthen the human connections I have because people are everything to me in both my personal life and in my career. Yet remembering details about conversations I had at happy hour or over a Zoom call can be hard, and figuring out how I know someone I met years ago can seriously use up so much brain power. Before Clay, being thoughtful required relying on my memory, as well as a mix of spreadsheets, note cards, address books, and so many other tools, in addition to it being so difficult to manage. But that's where Clay comes in, a stunning, intuitive, and private home for your relationships built automatically from the handful of platforms you use every day, like your email, calendar, phone, contacts, LinkedIn, Twitter, and more. When you log on to Clay, you get to see information about all of the people you've interacted with over the years in just one place. You could easily find a person's bio, work history, social media, and start jotting down notes, reminders, and more to deepen your relationships with them over time. Be a better friend. Be a better colleague. The most powerful way to never forget who matters to you is to try clay today. Just visit clay.earth, that's clay.earth, or click the link below. Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. I'm back. Last week, I had COVID. I did a whole episode, a quick little episode last week, just not to leave you hanging about some recommendations of things that I like, books, TV shows, and podcast episodes. And today, I want to talk about a lot of things, but I'll start off with COVID. So last week, I was like Tuesday, I went into Manhattan, I had such a great little day, came home, I had a Zoom call with some of my best friends, and after that Zoom call, I felt this one way that I have felt one time in my life before, where all of a sudden your body is shaking uncontrollably and there's nothing that you can do about it. I took a hot shower, my body was shaking in the shower, and I was like, oh my god, I know exactly what this is because like, I don't know, 10 years ago when I was living in LA, I got the flu for the first time and that's exactly what happened to me when I got the flu. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to freak out about it. It was like 11 o'clock at night. So I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning, took my temperature at a high fever. Adam brought me a COVID test. I instantly, within like, I'd say five seconds, the test lit up positive. I've taken many COVID tests in my, my two and a half years of COVID being a thing. I've never, ever, ever tested positive before. There's been some times where I'm like, I don't know, is the line, is the line showing? Is it not? But in this test, the line was lit up. So after that, what did COVID feel like for me? I think I had a very mild version of it. For the most part, I just had a fever, a couple body aches, and a little bit of congestion. But after a couple days of that, I didn't really have any symptoms. I think I got away pretty, pretty easy with the whole COVID thing, but it definitely knocked me out. You know, there was like one day I had massive brain fog. I could not do any work. 
for the most part, I've just been like trying to nap every day and take it easy. But it, COVID happened out of nowhere. And you know, the crazy part is I kept saying like, oh my God, you know, I didn't get COVID. It's been two and a half years. Like maybe I'm in the clear. Maybe I'm never going to get it. And the second I found myself bragging about that on Tuesday was the day that I ended up getting COVID. But we are back in action and I'm so happy to be able to talk to you on this microphone without feeling exhausted or feverish and just feeling super, super healthy. A couple of weeks ago, I did this really interesting thing with a group of my friends. We went to Queens, New York, and we went to this place where they do aura readings. And it was so interesting because I never got an aura reading before. I wasn't really sure like what it was. I've gone to psychics. I've gone to palm readers. I've done tarot card readers. I've had mixed experiences. Like in 2016, a psychic told me I would absolutely never find love. I'd be alone the rest of my life, which spoiler alert, I met Adam like a week later. Earlier this year, I did a tarot card reading where I'm not even kidding you she spot on knew every single secret I ever have in this life like she was able to tell me basically every single secret that I'm holding inside she knew about it was bizarre so I do sort of believe sometimes in these alternative ways of learning about yourself or learning information so what is an or reading basically here's what my experience was I went to this place it was a jewelry store And you sit in front of this camera and you place your fingers on this like energy board, I guess. I'm not really sure what you put your fingers on. And all of a sudden they take a picture. And when the picture is developed, it has a bunch of colors around you. And those colors mean something about your aura. So we paid a lot of money for this. And when you pay for this, they also tell you like what your aura reading is. And what was interesting was I believe like the left side of the picture or the right side, one of the sides of the pictures tells you what your past is so it tells you like the colors the auras the meanings of your past and then the other side of the picture kind of tells you what's going to what it's going to be like for you in the near future so it was really interesting because what my aura was was so incredibly spot on the man looked at my picture it was a mix of all these colors and he was basically like okay you have this extreme tightness in your heart You hold on to so much, you don't share things with people, and you carry so much worry around with you, which, by the way, is the most spot on way to describe me. Like if you were to ask pretty much anyone who knows me well, they'd be like, yeah, you you are like a secretive person. You carry a lot in you. No one really ever knows what's going on with you. And the fact that this person was able to tell me that just by looking at the colors and my aura fascinated, fascinated me. And I was like, okay, like that's interesting advice. And by the way, that's like very spot on, but what am I supposed to do? And he said to me, so many of the things you hold inside can be cured with one thing. And I was like, what, therapy, LOL? And he was like, no, a walk underneath a sun. And I said to myself, like, what, is that true? Like going for a walk in the sun, I'm always out there in the sun. And basically he just sat there and he reminded me that like, A person like me who holds in so much, who lives a complicated life, who sometimes makes things harder for themselves than they ever needed to make them, is always looking for complicated solutions, chaotic solutions, crazy things to match the crazy that they feel. But what he basically said to me was sometimes what you can do to tame that noise or to help a person out like you, to jumpstart a tired heart or to just let yourself not feel so much all of the time is to walk underneath the sun where you can change your energy, where it forces you to take a deep breath and brings you natural happiness. And the more I thought about this, the more I was like, wow, everybody needs this life advice because we're all looking for complicated solutions and big changes and expensive ways of getting self-care. But one of the easiest things that we can do to breathe, to relax, to focus, to just stop thinking about the millions of things that we think about is perhaps something as simple as just going for a walk and standing underneath the sun. So look, I don't think that that's going to be the solution that fixes all of the ways that I am, but I do think it's brightness that everyone can use in their life to to pick them up when maybe they, they need it a little bit more. One thing that I wanted to talk about recently is another personality trait of Jen Glanz is that I don't give up very easily or at all or rarely but the other week I signed up for a writing class and I basically thought it was a class where they were going to teach us how to write a novel which is something that I really want to work on and all this stuff so I get to this class and it's three hours on a Wednesday night from 7 to 10 I get to this writing class and basically the instructor's like okay 
This class is a writing only class. So for three hours every Wednesday night, you all are gonna write. You're gonna leave your Zoom camera off, but leave your Zoom on and you're just gonna write. And I'm thinking to myself, are you kidding me? Like I pay a lot of money for this class. I don't need accountability, I wanted to learn. And now I'm stuck in this class where for three hours on a Wednesday night past my bedtime, we have to, we have to write? Like this isn't the class for me. But the old version of myself would have stayed would have forced myself to stay through this class, which I would have gotten nothing out of because as a writer, we have our own flows and Zen states and, and ways that we feel good writing. And I, I don't feel good writing in group settings at 7 p.m. on a Wednesday. But I decided to do something that was very out of character for me and just a little bit different. I dropped out. I got my money back. And I vowed to spend those three hours every Wednesday night doing something more productive and something different. Now, how can you relate this story to your life? There might be something you're holding on to right now that isn't serving you or isn't right for you. And you're holding on to it because you have that stubborn soul or bouts of confusion or you don't know if it's okay to press the pause button or step back or just say goodbye to something you're doing just because. But I want you to know that you're never stuck with the version of yourself that you are today, even if you feel that way. We're all constantly growing and changing, evolving, and so should the things that we say yes to or give our precious time to. So if there's something in your life where you just don't feel like it's, it's right for you or you're just doing it, you don't even have a reason why, perhaps it's time to reevaluate what is right. What would it take for you to press the pause button on that and do something that fits you better, that makes you happier, that's more in line with the person that you want to become? We can't always waste time and hope that through wasting time, we'll figure things out. Through wasting time, we'll waste more time and we'll wake up one day and realize we wasted most of our life. So I challenge you to take inventory on your life and see what it is that you no longer need to keep doing just because. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen too. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.